Yep, that's my suitcase and it together with my family and I are actually getting on an aeroplane. Normally this place is packed. Look at it. The joys of traveling during COVID. This is so weird. How mad is this? Completely empty airport. Usually this place is buzzing around about this time with people everywhere. Got some candy. We're flying to Nice in France and this will be our first trip during COVID times. As you can see, I'm in Bay, which is just above Monaco and I'm gonna take you along for this little journey to show you how beautiful this village is. Only 500 years old, so it dates back to the 12th century. And that's what I love about France, is all these cool little villages that have just been so well preserved. You know, it's part of history, and I love that. But so good to have a little bit of a break, be able to come and travel again. We haven't been anywhere for over a year and a half. When you can't travel much, it just makes you appreciate these places so much more. But it's so quiet, I mean, she almost scared to talk. Uh, I don't want to break the peace. Now that I've woken up the entire neighbourhood with my troublesome door, let's go and explore. It gets quite dark in some of these little streets, these little tunnels. Amazing. One of the most picturesque villages in the Côte d'Azur, it's definitely a mystery as to how it's possible that this tiny place has remained a hidden gem for so long. Some of these archways get pretty low. I mean, I'm a short person. Look at this. I'm always touching the top. I love this stuff. Known by the locals as the most curious in southern France, or le plus curieux, and I'm certainly curious as to how this place can be really just a short drive from the hustle and bustle of Monaco. Yep, that's the fast-paced principality. Ah, that's better. I think I prefer the calm, quiet tranquility of Pei. It's probably the quietest village I've ever been in my life. Look at that little passage there. This village is just incredible. You can walk around it probably in about 10, 15 minutes. The only problem for me in a place like this is I tend to get lost because all these streets look absolutely identical. Found it at last. Although Pei is very close to both Monaco and Monton in terms of distance, it's fairly difficult to reach, and even though public transport exists, it's highly recommended to go by car. Ideally, a little moped is advisable though, as the road access is somewhat confined and very windy. What's so cool about this place is if you look around here, you see on the other side of Pei is just this sheer mountainside. Um, with amazing trees and uh, very narrow roads. Check out the little caves here. See people cycle through them. Look at the sky. Seems to be a pretty big cycling region here too. Everywhere you go you see cyclists and it's a wonderful place to ride. So when cars go through those tunnels, usually they, they do do they hoot their horns just to make sure there's no accident. Or if you're these guys, you literally just scream and shout. Isn't it stunning, this place? I mean, look at that beautiful village right here on this mountainside. That's what I love about France, is all these little gems that you find. I think that's what has tickled my fancy here the most, is the fact that this quaint village is so elegantly perched in the most dramatic of hilltop landscapes. If you walk up the Rue Lascarie, you'll come across the Palais Lascarie. Sadly, you'll see a lot of stuff is closed here as well due to COVID. So I can't go in and look at that beautiful building. 
You know you're near the top of the hill when you come across this black and white cat with a slightly moth-eaten ear. Wow. And then with the cat, because I always wanted a cat, but I never got a cat. Can I get a cat? Sorry, Bella, no cats today. But what about this fella? Lots of cats and dogs around here too. Just made a new friend. That guy. Sweet little dog. He's following me. Carry on up the hill and you'll reach the Monument of Moor, a wartime statue. So mountains on this side and then bay over there. Absolutely gorgeous. In fact, quite honestly, you'll be hard pressed to find a spot here that doesn't offer breathtaking scenery. Another point of interest is the Saint Marie Church and the little yellow church at the Place Saint Roche. Look at the trees growing out of this building. Keep an eye out too for the original 14th century Gothic fountain with drinkable water. I think this is natural spring water coming directly from the mountain, which seems to uh, feed the entire village. The smaller fountain here was apparently used for animals, while the larger one was used by the thirsty inhabitants. This sounds like it's some sort of a well. You can hear the water trickling down. Beautiful, fresh, clear water. There are a few eateries here too, and a boulangerie, but while we resided in the village, most seemed shut. There's one certainty. The fantastic views, narrow, cobbled, windy streets, low archways and beautiful medieval architecture will make you fall in love with this quaint village. This little village really sums up everything I love about France, a true picturesque piece of French paradise. So that is Bay for you. Very nice to be traveling again and in another part of the world. It's so great to be back in France and exploring these amazingly beautiful villages here in the Côte d'Azur Nice region. So that's awesome. More content coming up for you very soon. Click on the screen anywhere here. You'll see lots of videos and I will see you back in Mauritius very soon. See ya.